Okay, this section is on 8.3 relative rates of growth. So what we're going to do is using still L'Hopital's in some of these problems, we're going to see if one of the equation or function is growing faster or slower than the other. So one of the rules that we're going to look at says that if f grows faster than g of x as it approaches to infinity, if the limit as x approaches to infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to infinity. So notice that the f, if it's on the top, if it equals to infinity, then f is faster in this case. Or the limit as x approaches to infinity, and it says g of x is over f of x is equal to zero. So if f of x is as a denominator and it equals to zero, then this f right here is still faster. So it's one of the, um, if f is on the top, it has to equal to infinity to be faster. Or if f is on the bottom, then it better equal to zero to say it's equal to um, it's going to be faster. If not, then we're saying g is slower, right, in this top part, or g is slower in this part right here as well. So then the other one we have is this: f and g grow at the same rate as x approaches to infinity if the limit as x approaches to infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to a number. Actually, in this case, I believe that it doesn't matter if the g of x or f of x is on the top or bottom as long as the, um, it equals to a number. But I usually get in the habit of using the f of x as a numerator instead. So same thing with this one right here. I usually put it as a numerator up here. So I know then I'm always looking for infinity and I don't have to confuse myself and look for either one of these guys right here. Okay, so let's try these then. So these are some examples that are similar to the homework. It says show that e of x grows faster than the x squared plus five of x plus three. So we're gonna write down the limit as x approaches to infinity, and then we have is then the fraction. So I'm going to put e of x, this is going to be, so usually the first equation that's given, this right here, is going to be considered your f of x right there. So then from here, my other equation, which is this one right here, I'm going to call this g of x right there. So I'm going to put that as a denominator right here. So this is going to be x squared plus 5x plus 3 right there. And now we're going to see if the E equation is growing faster than this right here. So what I need is then if that's my F equation that's up here, then it better equal to infinity at the end is what we want. Okay? So using L'Hopital's then, we're going to say the limit as X approaches to infinity. So derivative of E to the X is just E to the X itself. And then derivative of X squared plus 5X plus 3 gives us 2X, right, plus 5. And so if I substitute infinity, we have a problem because it becomes e to the infinity, which is infinity, and then 2 times infinity, so that's the infinity over infinity we can't have. So we're going to have to go stronger. So if we go stronger, then we have is the limit as x approaches to infinity. And then we still have is the derivative on the numerator still e to the x. And then the bottom is 2 right there. Okay. So now if I substitute infinity in this part right here, right, that e to the infinity is basically infinity. So all of this should equal to infinity right there. Because infinity over a number is equal to infinity. Okay, so that's what we needed right here. All right, so let's try example number two. So example number two says show that ln x grows slower than the square root of 5x. Okay, so again, it really doesn't matter if I put this as f of x first or um, if I don't. So I'm going to consider that f, f of x though because usually when it's given I'm going to consider that always f of x and consider this as g of x right there. Okay, So we're going to write down the limit as x approaches to infinity and then do the same thing ln x on the top and then I have then what was that square root so I'm going to say 5 oh actually square root of 5x right there. Okay, now, here are some tricks that we're going to deal with. Because when you have radicals, and if I actually take it to, I was originally going to take it to the half power on the top. So if I take it to half power to the top, we're going to have a chain rule involved, right? Because then we're going to have to bring down the half, and then we copy everything, right? And take the derivative of that. So when you simplify that, actually, after you do the chain for the derivative, it's not going to actually reduce this uh, problem right here. If anything, it's going to go around in a cycle because then you're going to keep on going and going on as far as derivative. And you can't go stronger than, or I, can, I guess you can't go more than second derivative, right? So here's the trick. So if you have a radical like this, and especially because this is the second power right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. So this is going to be my algebra 2 part of it. So I'm going to simplify this. So the rule of algebra says that whatever I do on one side, right, 
of the equal sign, I do the same on the other side of the equal sign. Well, same thing with this right here. Whatever I do on this part of the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing for the numerator to make that equal part of it. Okay? So I'm simplifying this and then saying that it's going to be ln x to the second power. And then this right here is going to get rid of the square root. And then I have this 5x. So we don't want any radicals in the problem. We actually want is the polynomial instead. Because that makes it easier if we do um, the L'Hopital's. So now I'm ready to do the L'Hopital's. So here we are. Limit as x approaches to positive infinity. And then we have is derivative of this. Now this is going to require a chain right here. So the derivative of that becomes 2, right, ln x. Because I bring the 2 down, right, subtract 1. Take the derivative of the inside, which then becomes 1 over x, all over, in this case, becomes 5. Okay? So now we just need to simplify this further. So I'm going to simplify this as 2 ln x over x, right, all over the 5. That's from here. This 5 right here. This is like 5 over 1, so I'm going to multiply the reciprocal of that. That leaves me then 2 ln x over 5x. Okay, so all of this simplifies to this part right here. So I think I can go stronger for this one. So let's try going stronger. So if I go stronger for this one, it's going to be what? 2 times 1 over x, right? All over 5, which then simplifies to 2 over x all over 5. If I multiply the reciprocal, I'm running out of space here, it's going to be what? 2 over 5x right here, right? So then from here, if I'm substituting in the limit as x approaches to infinity in here, then we have is then 2 over 5 times infinity, which is basically infinity right there. So 2 divided by infinity is equal to 0, right? Because 2 divided by any large number is equal to 0. Okay, so what did I prove? I proved that the f of x grows slower, right, than all of this right here. Okay, because if I put f of x on the top, and it equals to 0, then obviously f of x is slower. Because then this rule says if f of x is a denominator and equals to 0, then f of x is faster. But since I put f of x on the top right here, right, and it equal to 0, that means f of x is, equal to, is slower than the, um, the square root of 5x right there. Okay? So now let's try in the example number three. So example number three says show that x, um, x squared grows at the same rate. So what I'm looking for then at the same rate means it needs to equal to a number right here. Okay? So I'm going to start with, again, this being my f of x right here. So we have is the limit as x approaches to infinity of x squared. And then we have the fourth root. So this is my fourth root right here. Um, x to the eighth power plus 7 x to the fourth. Okay? So now this right here, um, I'm going to do the same thing as what I just did over here with the radical. So I don't want the radical. So to get rid of the fourth root, then we're going to take it to the fourth power, right? So if I take it to the fourth power right there, that leaves me then the limit as x approaches to infinity. And then we have is what? x to the eighth, right? All over. And this is going to cancel out right here for us. So that's going to give us x to the eighth plus seven x to the fourth. So now if I actually do just do a comparison of this right here, this right here is kind of remember of doing like the HA for the asymptotes when we did the um, in pre-calculus. So if I do a comparison, because this really is really meaningless, because anything when, as we go to infinity, infinity is being a large number. So we really want to compare is this right here. So if I reduce this right here, it basically equals to one right here. So since it equals to a number, I prove that it's growing at the same rates. Okay, so we want to prove it that it's growing by grow, uh, making sure it comes out to a number. Okay, so now let's try example number four. So number four says determine whether e to the x is growing faster, slower, or at the same rate. So I'm not sure if this is going faster, slower, or anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and try this out. So the limit as x approaches to infinity, and then I have is e to the x is the top right there, and then 7x. Now, this is another one that's one of the special cases. If I actually take the derivative of 7x, this is like my au right here, right? So if I take the derivative of au, it becomes au ln a. And again, that's going to go around in the circle right there. So it's not going to really do much for us. So actually, I'm going to simplify this. And if I simplify something like this, where I factor out an x right here to the exponent, because they both share an exponent of x right there, okay? So this right here, actually, I'm not going to even consider L'Hopital's. I'm just going to use my logic. 
So if I have e to the first right here, we said e to the first is approximately about 2.7. And this is 7 down here, right here. So obviously 7 is larger than 2.7. So since 7 is larger than 2.7, um, we're going to say if I put in infinity, obviously this is the infinity down here. And this is going to be like considered some number up here. I don't care what that is. So 2.7 times like 7 times infinity, this is going to equal out to 0 right here, right? Because infinity is on the denominator. So that's where we're, we really don't care as far as the, uh, the numbers right there, because when we start talking about infinity, it's a large number. So I'm just going to put 1 over infinity right here as equal to 0. So since it equals to 0, then we're saying what we're, um, remember the f of x, uh, what are we doing? So if this is my f of x right here, yeah. So if we said the f of x is on the top right here, and we set it equal to 0, that means then um, the f of x is going slower, right, because it's equal to zero. Because if f of x is on the top right here and it equals to infinity, then f of x is going faster. But in this case, f of x is going slower since it's equal to zero. Okay? All right, my last example. So example number five says determine whether x squared grows faster, slower, or at the same rate than this right here. So doing the same thing, we're going to take the limit as x approaches to infinity of x squared all over x squared plus cosine x. Okay, so then I'm going to take the L'Hopital, so that's going to give me 2x down here, and I have this 2x derivative of positive cosine gives us negative sine, so we have this negative sine, the limit as x approaches to infinity. Okay, so as I substitute in my infinity, I'm going to have a problem because I have infinity, infinity, infinity right here. So let's just go stronger, so if I go stronger it's going to be 2 over 2 minus sine x right there, right? So this is going to be the limit as x approaches to positive infinity. Okay, so now this is going to where um, I'm going to have a problem because if I substitute infinity in here, the sine right here, as it goes to infinity, as you know, sine wave is always goes something like this, right? It's going to go wiggling, something like this, and it never actually goes to, like, shoots up. It's actually the maximum it can be is positive 1, and the minimum it can be is negative 1 as far as the um, whole number right here, right? So I really don't want to consider this right here because I'm not sure if it's positive 1, negative 1, or anything like that. So I'm just going to cancel that out. So I'm really, it's really comparing these two right here. So if you compare 2 over 2, it equals to 1 right there. So that means that this is going to come at the same rate. These two equations are growing at the same rate because right here it equals to a number. Okay, So that's kind of the problems that we're going to work on. You're going to try to figure out if it is um, growing faster, slower, or at the same rate. And it all depends on where you put the f of x. So if you put the f of x on the top, make sure that the answer comes out to infinity. That means that f of x is faster and g of x is slower. Right. If you put f of x as the denominator, then we're saying it better equal to zero to make it go faster. So this is faster right here, and then we're saying that g of x is slower right here. Okay? Or the other one was if it's growing at the same rate, then both the f of x divided by g of x, it has to equal to a number right there. Okay? All right, let's try these problems now.